just a few days have passed since part one of this little series of videos rearing these things. It's time for another update already. Well, yes, the convolvulus hawk moths, one of which I have in here, these young larvae are growing at an alarming rate. And now, just three days after we put them into these containers, they've outgrown them. It's time to move them on to a larger container. Well, as in part one, you don't need to look at my physog to see this this is the important bit if you're new to rearing larva the key thing is to don't be afraid don't over mollycoddle them a lot they're tougher than what you think in most instances and if you're buying your larva from an entomological supplier take heed as to any recommendations that they mention if they say these larva aren't for beginners stay away from them and choose something easier this of course is one of a number of convolvulus hawk moth larvae that i'm rearing and as you can see from the video just a few days ago this is now considerably larger than what you saw in fact this is two inches long now this larva and it's in the process of changing skin you may well be able to make out if I can get it in the right light that the head capsule at the front there is right forward over the mouth. No harm to the larva and this larva will have changed its skin probably within a few more hours but as you can see it's now considerably outgrown this sized part time for something larger. This large is ideal you can go even larger than this and I have some sort of square buckets that are about 10 inch square and about 10 12 inch deep and probably within a few days I will be putting three or four of those into those buckets but in the meantime this well used plastic container is ideal for one possibly two larvae I wanted to or had the need to cram them in now you may recognize this plastic box as being a box that contains some really nice foil wrapped chocolates. The advantage of using these is that if you were to buy a similar box from an entomological supplier, it would cost you the best part of five pounds each. I prefer to go to the supermarket, get this container when it's full of chocolates, eat the chocolates, have a fantastic plastic container, for the same price it's a win-win situation ideal these are great for a number of larvae you can keep a lot of smaller larvae in here but as a general rule don't overcrowd larvae at all unless those larvae are typically gregarious as some species are namely the nymphales like small tortoiseshell peacock and a few others but these, for many larvae, for any smaller larvae, can live in one of these completely from egg to pupa quite easily. So this is the container that I'll be moving this convolvular salt moth caterpillar into. I'm being careful not to handle this too much because, as I say, skin change is a very important process for the caterpillar. So make sure that your container again same as before as in part one make sure that container is clean and for a container of that age that is clean i've been and got some fresh food plant that is plenty it's 
caterpillar won't start eating this until tomorrow. In goes the larva. The lid goes on. Now I quite like to stand these up now. And so in order to keep this lid on, sometimes it can sort of drop forward like that. All we need then is just a bit of sellotape around here just to keep it in place. The frass accumulates down at the bottom and then you can clean it out daily. You can of course keep it like that, line the bottom with some tissue paper and perhaps for convolvulus hawk moths I would recommend use as they get larger I would recommend the use of tissue paper at the bottom because the frass for convolvulus hawk moths and it's the same with elephant hawk moths as well it tends to be quite moist some it's very very dry death's head hawk moths the frass is very dry and easily to yeah easily able to be cleaned so one larva in one container and that's a set for another couple of days but say if you're struggling for containers and can't eat any more of these delightful chocolates then perhaps a larger container might be what you need so after taking the larva out of these size containers it's time to scale them up as I've showed, you can then move single lava into a container this size. It's a well-known brand of chocolates, but the container is ideal for rearing lava. You can obviously keep several lava in there, but don't let the lava outgrow the container size. It needs space. You don't want to have overcrowding so you can move them into something like this this is a plastic tub it's about 10 inches square and i've lined the bottom with a bit of tissue paper because as i've mentioned convolvulus hawk moths the larva are quite or the frass from the larva is quite moist here's one that's just nearly into its last instar or possibly is there's an awful lot of growing to do in this one and you can see how the colour has changed they are very variable so we'll bring you in a bit closer for this container now a container of this size is ideal for a number of larvae and i have two containers the same as this so i've got about 11 larvae and I'm going to divide so many up into these containers but in order to do that we need some fresh food which I've just collected here this of course is bindweed usually easily found white trumpet flowers grows in hedgerows and up fences often in waste ground but beware if you're rearing convolvulus hawk moth caterpillars and they have been for sale the eggs and larva have been for sale these last few weeks from a number of entomological suppliers so these things aren't impossible to obtain at one time they were so we've been able to have bought convolvulus hawk moth caterpillars from any supplier 30 40 years ago was unheard of And because they can be quite dirty, change them and clean them out daily. It's well worth it. So we can put a selection in here. There's two there. They will soon outgrow this space. And we'll put this larger one in here. Another couple of days, this will be enormous, but it's changed its skin just this morning. So that won't start feeding until later on today so we have three in there i can put another one i will do just for a day or so and then we'll thin these out again and in all probability i will have grown food plant in water stood in a net cage 
as these start to get larger that may have been where I went wrong last year I didn't give them enough sort of aeration and I think food planting water they would do much better with the airiness of a netted cage so for now a number of lava into a tub like this this tub will keep several easily right up to full grown size and we'll see how we go but if you don't have tubs like this go to the supermarket and buy yourself some chocolates <laughs>